This is Chicago's very own WGN News at 9. Developing tonight, we are learning new details about the death of friend star Matthew Perry. According to an autopsy report, Perry died from acute effects of ketamine. Police found the 54-year-old unresponsive in his hot tub in October. Perry had been receiving ketamine infusions for depression, but the ketamine in his system wouldn't have been from his most recent treatment. The ME report noted no traces of other drugs or alcohol. So joining us now with more insight on the drug ketamine and how it is used, Dr. Balnadra with Ketamine Centers of Chicago. Doctor, glad to have you with us. Thanks so much. So it has different medicinal uses here. Uh, Perry was using it for uh, treatment of depression. Uh, tell us about that and what other uses uh, people use it for. So ketamine has been around for 50 years. It's a very safe drug when administered by a medical professional in a monitored setting. Um, it's been used a lot for chronic pain management um, and for addiction and over the last 10 or so years for uh, many mental disorders such as depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Uh, but also understand um, for, for painkillers uh, in, in light of the, uh, the OxyContin crisis. Uh, so tell us about that aspect of it. Yeah, so ket ketamine has been found to be a pretty viable alternative to opioids in some settings. Um, not only does it do a great job with pain management, but it also is far less addictive, hardly addictive actually compared to opioids. So it's a very safe drug in that aspect. Uh, can it be self-administered? What, what do we know about the way it was used maybe in this instance? Well, so in this incident, Matthew Perry had his last ketamine infusion because he was getting treatments for his illness and his addiction. Uh, his last treatment was about a week and a half prior to his death. Um, ketamine is very rapidly cleared in the body, and usually within about three days, there's zero detectable ketamine level. So he most likely ingested ketamine within hours of his death and probably via oral, via the oral route or I suppose nasally, but we don't know that. Um, whatever it was, it was a pretty massive dose. So, so it sounds like it and that could could have been could have been uh, the 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 amount of the the drug there, but also the the coroner noted uh, a, a drowning because of the condition that he was in here. Uh, tell me about that. So the coroner noted that he had a history of, he had detected coronary artery disease on the autopsy also, and he also had an opioid in his system called buprenorphine, which is an opioid used to treat addiction and chronic pain, and that wasn't in um super high levels or anything that was actually considered therapeutic um but the levels the actual levels of ketamine that were measured in his blood at his time of death were very high in fact they were actually about 20 times higher than the levels that you achieve during a regular ketamine infusion for depression so his levels were incredibly high and actually at such a high level that that's basically a general anesthesia level. Uh, briefly, I want to ask you before we go here, what uh, kind of warning or, or dangers do you think should, should come with ketamine? What should people think about if they want to consider it? If you want to consider ketamine for mental illness, you should definitely make sure you're going to a, a clinic or a center that is, has a lot of experience with ketamine, where there are professionals such as an anesthesiologist um, who know how to administer ketamine safely and monitor you. And obviously, you know, be wary of very, very high doses that could be dangerous. His doses, however, were excessively high. Um, and I can't imagine giving anybody that much ketamine or even close to that in my clinic. All right, Dr. Bell Nadra with the Ketamine Centers of Chicago. Appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank you.